Hi, this is Salma Lalana in Manos Brilakis, and this is case 196 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating use of the parallel wiring technique for an LED CTO. The patient had a history of coronary disease with previous stents seven years prior. He also had a few months back an acute inferior STEMI with RC occlusion treated with standing, and he was found at that time to have a CTO of the LED with viability of the anterior wall, and he was referred for PCI of the LAD CTO. Here is the angiogram showing an osteal occlusion of the LAD. There are previously placed stents into the LAD a little further inside the osteum. The circumflex does not have significant disease. The RCA is also patent with previously placed stents. And there is a ramus branch originating next to the LAD origin, and that had some disease in the, or in the beginning. This is the spider view, demonstrating potentially an entry point into the LAD CTO, the disease into the ramus, and the non-diseased uh, circumflex branch. So how to approach this lesion? This has a semi-ambiguous cap. We're not sure if this stamp actually leads into the LAD, although we do have the stents that can serve as indicator of the vessel course. The lesion length was about 40 millimeters. This distal vessel was diffusely diseased, but that was likely due to underperfusion, and there was septal collateral from the right coronary artery. The plan was to start with undergrade wiring using IVUS to resolve the proximal cap ambiguity. If it didn't work, go retrograde from the right coronary artery, and if that didn't work, try undergrade dissection reentry. This was the least favored approach given the previous stents into the LED. And this is IVUS. We have an eight friends guide into the left main. We wired both the Ramus brands as well as the circumflex. And intravascular ultrasound demonstrates the origin of the LAD, which actually was at the point of uh, the stump. There is a back and forth movement. That's why the IVUS is going back and forth. But essentially what we are seeing is that the LAD uh, is at the location of the stump. We were not able to advance any wires because of the significant uh, bend, about 90 degree bend. And for lesions like this, either in the circumflex or the LAD, the venture catheter can be very useful. The venture provides strong support. We can turn the knob on the proximal lead and turn the distal tip up to 90 degrees. Filter XTA did not work, but then trying a guy next to, we were able to advance inside the proximal cap. We were then able to advance the Gaia Next 2 further inside the lesion and then follow with the venture microcatheter after straightening the tip. But unfortunately, despite de-escalating to a filter XTA, we found that the filter XTA was actually following a course outside the previously placed stents. So what to do next? One option is to knuckle all the way and then re-enter, but because this is the LAD, we don't want to lose any potential large side branches like diagonals, so that's not a good option. The other option is the, to leave the existing wire in place and then try parallel wiring, which can be facilitated by using a dual lumen microcatheter. So we brought in a Sasuke and the guy on X3 and tried to navigate. And we can see that the wire is actually moving in a different course that seems to be more inside the stand. We did use different projections to confirm that the wire was moving inside the stand. So we have both uh, RAO and LAO cranial views, and we can see that the Gaia Next 3 is moving in the right direction. And after some manipulation, we were finally able to advance the Gaia Next 3 guide wire that uh, went a little further down into the LED. And now the wire seems to be following the course of the vessel and going through the previous stand is obviously fairly reassuring. This is a contralateral injection, and uh, sure enough, we have actually crossed into the distal true lumen. We switched the guide wire to workhorse guide wire, and then um, we performed balloon angioplasty on the LAD. There is still some poor flow distally. So we performed IVUS again to check the vessel. There is some diffuse disease and uh, there was uh, a lot of plaque into the left main. 
The left main actually appeared to be significant. The MLA was 7 mm square, which was something we did not fully appreciate when we started the case. So we do have, in addition to the LADCTO, we do have some left main disease. But the patient did remain very stable throughout all these crossing attempts. We then stented the LAD with regoluting stents in the proximal and mid segment. And then uh, we also ended up standing the ramus, which uh, did seem to have significant disease. And then we decided to stand uh, into the left main using the provisional approach, since there was no significant uh, disease in the origin of the circumflex. We did the proximal optimization technique, but there was under expansion on the distal left main. And there was also a likely stand induced dissection in the ramus, so we placed an additional stand there. Ivus showed that the left main stand was under expanded in the distal segment. And that is why we ended up using um, intravascular lithotripsy in an attempt to get it better expanded. This is with um, a pot with a 5.0 millimeter balloon and that significantly improved the stenosis of the distal left main. And this is the final angiogram. We have excellent result into the left main as well as the LAD. Even though we jailed uh, the circumflex and the ramus, we have excellent flow in both of those branches. So this case provides uh, some good lessons. The first one is that the IVUS can be very useful for understanding the ambiguity of the proximal cap, especially if there is not much calcium at the origin of the vessel that is occluded. Second, using an angulated microcatheter, specifically the Venture microcatheter in our case was critical because it does provide very strong support and uh, enabled a Gaia next 3 guide wire to get through the occlusion and start working into the LED. Third, our guide wire unfortunately went into the extra plaque or outside the stand area, but uh, we did use a parallel wiring technique. We left the wire in the original location, brought a Sasuke and used the over the wire lumen of the Sasuke to advance another guide wire, another Gaia Next, the Gaia Next 3, that uh, went into the LAD and successfully crossed into the distal true lumen. Orthogonal projections were critical for achieving the success. And then we also found incidentally significant disease in the left main. That is why we stand it all the way from the LAD into the left main and optimized uh, the final result using intravascular ultrasound and the proximal optimization technique. Thank you.